Welcome, everybody. I hope you're having a fine morning, afternoon, evening. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we are going to be digging in on options pages and site-wide fields with ACF. Um, I'm Damon Cook with WP Engine Developer Relations. Um, I also have Mike Davey and Matt Shaw. Uh, they're in the uh, chat. They'll be in the chat uh, from the ACF team. Um, so if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the chat and I will stop periodically to try to answer some few, some of the questions. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end the poll. It looks like, let's see. Looks like the leading is folks have created a ACF's code only implementation and then they're new to me. Oh, that's good. Some new folks that are just completely new to settings and options. Great. There'll be plenty of stuff here for you too. So I'm going to end that poll. I'll share those results. Um, just a quick overview of what and why um, builders might want to use options pages. Um, typically, you're giving you want to give your clients or users a centralized area for all their site-wide settings. Um, it's a user-friendly interface for non-technical users. Uh, so they're not necessarily editing code, which is always a, a nice thing, a separation of concerns. Um, and it's only accessible to admin privileges, but I, you can also uh, specify that so you could change uh, who, who could access it. But um, by default, that's the typical um, scenario. Um, just some differences coming from... so. ACF's options pages are a refined approach to what WordPress core offers, uh, which is a two sets of uh, APIs, the settings API and the options API. And they can often be confused because some of the terminology blends together, but um, they really are rely upon each other in a way. Um, so the settings API, it allows you to create uh, settings pages in the admin area um, and sub pages, and then you associate options with those pages. Um, so the options API allows you to the create, read, update, and delete options. So those are just kind of the high level uh, differences there from WordPress course perspective, which ACF, again, builds upon and refines in a lot of ways and makes things easier. Um, I want to set kind of some project requirements that we're going to try to uh, tackle near the end of this um, demonstration. Uh, I think it gives us a good, um, yeah, just something to focus on. So we're going to pretend we have a, a request to from a client to edit the phone number in one spot. Um, show and hide a site-wide no notification bar, and they want access to add the their Google Analytics uh, ID. They're pretty standard, um, simple requests and great reasons to kind of reach for this type of functionality in your project. Um, this is just kind of a visual we'll be using. I'll be using the Frost theme from um, WP Engine, uh, Brian Gardner and DevRel team. It's one of our uh, themes. So here's a little, this orange area at the top, we'll be creating that in the Frost theme. Um, and then the phone number, we are, we'll actually create a custom ACF block to output, output that so we can drag and drop that into the footer and have a separate setting screen for the client to manage and update the phone number. Um, these are, again, since WordPress core has its own underlying, uh, APIs for settings and options, and there's so many ways to go about this. Um, I kind of just tried to break this down in the sequence of how we'll be going through this today. 
Um, I'll step through the first time with the easy uh, ACF Pro way, which is the code registration um, capability that's been available up and is still available till this day and will be available. Um, they're just in the upcoming 6.2 release. Uh, they will there will be a, an additional UI, uh, so it'll make it a lot easier. You won't have to just use code only to register these uh, options pages. Um, so I'll give a preview of that on the third item there, easiest and new way. Um, but I'll also give a demonstration briefly in the middle of kind of how the WordPress settings and options APIs work, um, because they're they can. I think it's it's helpful to see the differences between the two and how clunky kind of the WordPress way and how ACF really um, makes it compelling to just uh, use their APIs and, and make your day easier. So yeah, we want to, I have a local site here, which I wanna share. I'm gonna close this. Um, and I have a, 6.2, I call it pre-alpha, but since it's uh, we're not even <laughs> in beta stages yet, so I think uh, the beta is projected in the, the coming weeks, but um, got an early, early fresh version, so we can see this option. Um, and I also have a very simplistic uh, WordPress plugin uh, written here, which I'll be stepping through. So I'll show you the front end just so we get a baseline of what we're looking at. This is pretty much the frost theme as you install it. Um, I think I changed the footer. There's a different footer option and I just swapped it in. So it was a dark footer. Um, so this is kind of the front end of the site, pretty bare bones with all placeholder content. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar, well, based on the poll, some are familiar, but um, a lot of the, the code, the initial code registration ACF approach um, has typically, as I put a, 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 a tweet out on Twitter to ask about how people typically use it. And I think it's a pretty common scenario to see kind of these theme settings and have a header and footer area for, of a separate settings. Um, so this is kind of, I'm going to step into this plugin now that I wrote to demonstrate some of these features. Um, pretty standard WordPress plugin. Um, and then I'm going to step into this first example I wrote, which really covers the, the underlying, the, the basic scenario that we have in the ACF documentation. This is, I think, pretty common. Um, and I'm just going to jump to the bottom. I'm gonna actually collapse this giant. This is just an SVG uh, page 64, and it's a kind of a huge chunk here. Um, oh no, I can't collapse that. Sorry. Oh, I can collapse. Yeah, probably right here. I'll collapse that array just so it doesn't simplify things here. Um, but based on the documentation on ACF today, this is what you would typically do to register options pages. You have the add options pages, which uh, would register a, a top level page. Um, and then you can also optionally add sub pages and associate it with that uh, top level page. So if we look at the menu slug here, theme general settings, and then that's where we're telling the parent slug here, theme general settings. So I think a lot of folks are pretty familiar with this approach. And if I hop back over to the site, I can step through uh, some of the fields that I've already created, but um, is this also assigned in that file that I just showed? But um, I created these field groups, uh, brand colors. These are some color pickers. We've got primary, secondary, base, and contrast. Um, some contact information as a group, field group. And then I have phone number, email address. This is just some demo content, social links, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and default images. A lot of times um, I've seen, you know, Folks want to give their clients the option to have a custom archive image or 
taxonomy and single post image. So these I've already gone out and created just uh, so you have a good idea. And then if we hop over, and since I have these registered programmatically here and the plugin already activated, we can see this theme settings, which these are all assigned to. And actually, let me, sorry, let me demonstrate how we're assigning those. Um, yeah, location rules. So for this set of theme settings, we're assigning it to the theme general settings, which shows up over here once you add um, the ACF add options. Well, actually the page, sorry. Yeah. So this is the, once we add this, um, then it allows us to have the option over here for this theme general settings. So we have it assigned there. So then if we go over here and go to theme settings, we see our uh, field groups that I just stepped through. Primary, secondary, base, contrast, all the social and default images. Um, and then I also have just a header and footer, which allow, would, in theory, allow the, the um, client to put maybe scripts in if they needed that kind of capability. Um, so I think that's a pretty typical functionality a lot of ACF users currently uh, use in their sites. Um, and I'll actually pause there and see if there's any questions so far. Oh, yeah, I see Mike shared the uh, the link there for, yeah, that's the current process for registering those. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, we did have a question about uh, if code created options would be visible in the new UI. Uh, to quote directly from Matt, who answered in the chat, uh, they won't show up in the list of options created in the UI initially, but they will still work as they do now. Uh, you'll also be able to create child pages of code created option pages in the UI. Ah, right. Great point. Great call out. Yeah. Good questions. Yeah. So I wanted to get back to this one slide. Yeah, so that was covering the first here, the easy and current way using ACF Pro options pages with code registration, which is pretty common and straightforward. Um, so now I wanna show kind of how one might use the WordPress settings and options APIs. And let's see. I have this all encompassed in the same plugin. So in the demo ACF plugin, I'll be sharing a link at the end of the, the, the um, presentation today to this plugin so you can get the, the full code, but we can close this up. But, well, actually one thing I didn't cover was I brought over um, using the export option in ACF, I brought in all the fields as well, which is pretty a pretty common thing you can do um, so then you can just kind of keep everything in a single file and keep your files or your fields organized alongside your options pages. So I'll close that out and I'm going to come out, comment out this next one, because this is what I have the core example in. And I'll go ahead and open that file and step through a little bit of this. So for those that aren't familiar with the settings and options APIs that WordPress core offers, this is kind of a, and there's actually a tutorial on the, the theme or the developer handbook. Um, I believe Mike will probably share the link, but you know, this is pretty common uh, scenario here. Uh, again, these are pretty related to what ACF is doing. Um, add menu page again, a uh, higher high level page, top level page. Um, and then you can pass all these uh, options along and then you register settings. So um, I'm doing a phone number. I'm gonna keep it simple here, a phone number and a notification bar. This is kind of alluding to where we're going for our fi final client project. Uh, another setting for the text for the notification and then um, we register some setting sections. So 
those are just saying um, on our WordPress settings page, we want to have these uh, in different sections. So we'll have a contact info and a notification bar se uh, section. And then we use add settings field to add our fields, uh, notification fields. And then that's all hooked up on the admin in it, which is early enough um, so that really, because we're, we're, since we're manipulating things within the WP admin area, we just want to make sure we hooked into the right uh, hook there. And then near the bottom here is where we start to hook up kind of our output logic for each of these fields, which is really where ACF definitely shines is because all these fields gives you right out of the box. You don't have to create these. You don't have to um, set up, you know, validation for these fields. Um, you know, this is why this is kind of where the the short the yeah the, the short line problems of yeah, WordPress cores um, APIs they're there, and you can certainly build off of them. And there's all the options there, but they're pretty raw and bare bones, and it gives you a, a little more work to get them standing as all. Um, so yeah, and again, we're using you can pass the some permissions on who can access this page in WP Admin. Um, and then finally at the bottom here is where we do the, the final uh, page uh, markup. So I'll show you what that looks like. Um, let me make sure, yeah, I saved that after I commented it out, okay. Um, so if we refresh here, we should see, yeah, see, I have this, I, I tried to designate with a different icon here. This is the ACF created one, and this is the WordPress created one. So this is really what we get. Um, the, it's pretty, you know, pretty simple. That's using all the WordPress's styling and everything. Um, versus kind of something like this where you know ACF can give you a lot more options as far as presentation in the UI and all the validation of these fields. Um, there's so much to get you to get you started. So um, but this I just wanted to demonstrate a simple settings from WordPress core. Let's see here. Any questions? No. Yeah, Mike, thanks for sharing those links. Um, so those two methods are certainly handy to be aware of because different scenarios calls for different approaches. Um, but the new, with the upcoming ACF Pro release 6.2, um, this is where things get really handy. So I'm gonna start to, just comment out some more of these uh, things in my plugin, and I'll step through all this. Um, and I'm actually gonna now I'll leave that there. Save that. So a few things here, which some users might be familiar with or might not, but ACF JSON here we're setting. I'll open this up. We're just setting some custom uh, load and save points for telling ACF where to save some of our field groups um, and even our options pages. Um, so we're setting a custom location here in our plugin. And so whenever we create new fields and hit save, um, it'll save a JSON file in this directory. And so with this kind of that allows a, a nice workflow if you're working with other developers or just want to version control your plugin. You can push this up and sync these field groups in the UI. Uh, and here's an example of the, the options page JSON. So that's all of this um, acfjson.php is doing. We just have just using these filters for load JSON and save JSON. And then for ACF blocks, I'll open that up. Um, we have, I'll step through this in a second, but we have one phone number block, which we're creating a custom ACF block. 
And this will allow us to drag and drop it into our um, in the block editor in our theme, in the Frost theme. Uh, we just have a custom category. So when we go looking for blocks, we can have our phone number block located in ACF blocks category. Um, and then we also have uh, ACF allows for their ACF blocks API. If since our block that for our phone number has no field. It, the field is actually on the settings page, but it has no field within the editor UI. We have a, just a custom message, which I'll show highlight when, when I uh, add that to the, the theme. So we're just telling a uh, custom message along, passing that along. Um, so we hop back over here and I'm gonna bring so you can actually see there's a sync available because it's showing those. But I'm actually, yeah, I'm just going to bring these out of the trash, I think, because I already have them. Oh, no, I'll sync. Let's, yeah, let's do the sync. Okay, and then we're going to set these to active because right now they're inactive. And if you see this new in the upcoming release, we'll have this options pages um, menu item. And this is where you can create your options pages without any code registration. Um, or as Matt you know, alluded to, you can also, if you've already registered you know, top level pages with code, you can uh, assign and create uh, sub pages in here as well. So I'm gonna set these to active as well. I just um, already had these created and set them to inactive so they wouldn't show up. So let's see, we have I created a site settings options page and you can toggle, this is uh, clever. You can toggle, toggle on the advanced configuration. This is um, in line with what ACF is doing with field groups and post types as well. So if you want to get into the, the nitty gritty technical stuff here, you can uh, get down and drill down to customizing some of this information. I passed along just a, a description so I could distinguish it in the UI. Here you can set the permissions for this page. So um, edit, edit post is the default, but you can go through any of these. So if you only want to limit or expand access to more users, um, or user roles, then that, that's something you can man manipulate. And then you also have the data storage, which is another great thing that ACF options allows is typically your options are stored in the options table, but uh, ACF allows you to associate them with a post object or a user object or so many other things, taxonomy object. So um, yeah, you can get in, get in and start customizing some of that. I'm going to leave that as default for now. So this is the site settings. And then I think I had the, we don't need to save that. And they had the contact information, which is a child page. And yeah, that's all pretty uh, straightforward. So this is actually the new options page. We had the original ACF one and the WordPress one. And now we have a third one. <laughs> And these are the fields that I just brought in from, yeah, set to active. So we have the area for the client to add their Google Analytics ID. Um, we can toggle on this notification bar. See this, this handy UI, like you can't really get this with WordPress core. You'd have to write it all from some custom jQuery, but uh, ACF gives you all this, loveliness out of the box, which is great. Um, so we'll hit update there. And if we hop back over, I'll open this up in a new tab. And I'll show you the logic for this, but we have this new uh, message being displayed. And then we need to add our phone number block, which is associated here. If we change this, let's set a new phone number, uh, six, seven, eight, See how my random phone number 
skills are. We'll update that just, then we'll go into the site editor and I'm just gonna add the phone number down here. And it, as I showed earlier, we have a custom block wrapped for this. So if we select this and do insert after, say phone, there's our phone number block and there's the phone number. And as I said earlier, we passed a custom message since this has no field, it says edit the phone number and the site settings. So if the client was here, like, how do I update this phone number? Uh, they could just click, well, let me save this first before I demonstrate that, but you can click and it'll take, <clears throat> take them, oh, I forgot to update the link to contact information, but it should take them to here. <laughs> but you get the idea, it takes them to where they need to go to edit. So with that saved, we should see that on the front end for the phone number. Yep, there we go. And I can just show, uh, let's see, phone number output here, the display logic, we're just grabbing the phone number field. And this is pretty, straightforward ACF blocks logic here. Just uh, if we have the phone number, we output it. We have a little SVG icon and that's really it for that. And then as far as the display logic for the notification bar, I put that here in this uh, ACF options example too. We're just um, hooking into the WP body open action, and then putting our, checking for our notification bar to see if it's activated and if there's a message, and then we display it. And then here's the Google Analytics code. So let's actually verify that that's outputting, but we're just doing a script here and passing our Google Analytics ID if it's there. Um, but we can, we view source here. Actually, I'll just do an inspect. Um, we should see that being output as well. Google Analytics scripts. Yep, there we go. So that's a mission accomplished. <laughs> um, we gave a centralized place for the client to update this information. Um, but one thing I wanted to show that is really handy is if you're creating these field groups and associating with options pages or vice versa, if you're creating your options pages first, ACF makes it really handy to um, kind of stay in the flow with creating these things in the UI. So if we add new a new field group, we're gonna add one for social uh, links. Um, and we're just gonna make this a URL um, and we'll say Facebook because we want our client to be able to add their Facebook link. And we're gonna associate this with an options page here. We're gonna choose add new options page. And we'll call it social links and we're gonna associate it with the site settings, done. And then all we have to do is save. And now if we hop over here, social links, we're ready to go. That was that easy to just add that additional field and have it saved to a new options page all through the ACF UI, which is fantastic. Super speedy. <laughs> For anyone that's tried to write a uh, custom WordPress core settings pages and all these fields, it's so uh, fast to just be able to, to prototype these type of things and get them going. Uh, Mike, was there any questions that stood out or uh, no. Uh, oh, wait, we actually just had uh, one come in just now. Can we okay. move it around in the menu position? Yes. Great question. Yes, you can. Um, 
So if we come into site settings here, menu position, yeah, you have any gives you information here. I think um, actually I forget what the priority. So yeah, this is pretty handy. So we can move it if we want to move it above links. So 14 in theory, I guess. Uh, let's try it out. Save. Uh, Hopefully we didn't find a bug. Menu position. No, that didn't seem to take effect. So maybe I did find a bug. <laughs> Matt, did I miss something? That I should... tried just setting it to like five maybe, but yeah. it could oh. very well be that there is a bug. This is pre-release, right. yeah, pre-testing and all that. So, yep. Uh, yep, it's a bug. I'll look into that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yep, this is pre pre beta stuff and still working on it, but um, I think it gives a great overview. And that that option, yes, will be available. Um, and I believe, Matt, I think there's going to be, because I know there's an option to set an icon that'll probably, I don't know if that's going to be a follow up to 6.2, but um, yeah, so I'm pretty sure that will be in for 6.2, um, but uh, we'll double check. I think. At the very least, we'll have an input, but right. there might be a nicer way to select from existing icons and all that as well. But yeah, I'm just talking about us uh, being able to set these icons over here for these menu items, um, yeah. which is handy. Uh, so we can we add child options in the UI for code generation generated options pages? Yep. Uh, yeah. Yep. You can. Uh, you can even see that. So, yeah, if I create a new field, test, test, um, yeah, all these, all the ones that I created earlier. So these are all the ones, but this is these ones are the ones I created with code registration only. So I kind of uh, associate it with those. They'll show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, as far as the beta, there is a, um, I think Mike probably already, yeah, beta news. If you go to advancedcustomfields.com forward slash beta uh, hyphen news, you can sign up and get notifications on when the beta will be available, uh, which is handy. Uh, here's the final plugin that has all the code that I just shared today uh, and a candy QR code for you to scan. Um, definitely check out ACF Chat Fridays. I think uh, the next one is not this Friday, but I think the following Friday. Um, and I think Mike probably has a link for that as well to you to register for those. That, those are great because you can um, chat with the ACF team, find, about, find out about what's coming down the pipe. And then also they've been giving some great uh, demonstrations. There was actually uh, a demonstration of this options um, functionality, I think a few weeks ago, and there's a recording on that. And then also Ian did a demonstration on the bi-directional fields improvements that are coming out soon with 6.2 as well in the last um, ACF chat Friday. So I highly recommend signing up for those. Yep, you just dropped the link in there. And yeah, it's short and sweet today. I want pretty quick. Yeah, no problem. Thanks everybody for dropping by today. I appreciate it. Um, We'll wrap this up and I will get the recording up on our YouTube channel if there's no other questions. Thanks.